Thanks for coming in tonight. We appreciate it. Do you still want to hear about my warrant articles? Oh, of course. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> I may do a slideshow, but I promise I'm not going to read every single thing on that. I just, um, just wanted to get across the stuff that we do. And if I could get it to start, I would play it for you. Maybe Brian will start it for me. Oh. <laughs> it was working. The joys of technology. Uh, yeah, here comes the re reinforcements. Uh, uh, what's wrong, Brian? I have two warrant articles. Okay. I'll start with that. I'm just going to get some files. Yeah, I don't know why, because it was on. We left it on. Technically challenged, press the power button. Wait. It's right there. Come on. So why did that why did I don't that know, it must sit well because we shot it. Just gotta warm up. Nice. Right. So I'll start by saying that I do have two warrant articles this year. Um, there you go. And if I could find the one article, I'd read it to you. One is to, um, One is to make one of our employees a part-time employee, a full-time employee in the Parks Department. We need a Parks Foreman. And the other one will be from the Infra Recreation Infrastructure Revenue Fund. Um, it's taking a long time, Brian. I don't have a copy of the other one, article. All right. PowerPoint not responding. <laughs> there we go. All right. There we go. Good help, Brian. Good job, Brian. Unfortunately, it won't click. There we go. So the first warrant article is for full-time parks and recreation foreman. And shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $43,368 for the purpose of changing the parks foreman position in the parks and recreation department from a part-time to a permanent year-round full-time position. With the growth of the town, the play seasons lengthening, and the growing demands on the recreation infrastructure, the parks foreman cannot do all that is required in the current limited schedule. This appropriation will fund the salary and all benefits of the new full-time position. If the warrant article passes, the amount of 22452 appropriated for the operating budget for the parks foreman position as part-time will not be spent from the appropriation. So I just have a little history here about the parks department. I started my job here in 1993. I started my job as the director in 96, but I knew I saw what was going on here with the parks and at that time we had a seasonal foreman that worked from April 1st to September 1st and he had about five part-time seasonal employees. This time the tuck building was only used for camp and there was no fall or winter programming so there wasn't much use down there. In 99 we got a full-time par parks foreman and he led the seasonal employees. At this time the programs were expanding and the duties were growing and there was need for someone down at the parks in the fall and the winter months to prepare the ball fields and to clear the snow from the Kids Kingdom playground as it gets year-round year round use now. And they cleared from the other buildings, including this one. In 2001, the Tuck building was demolished and we got a new building in its place. The building now has heat and we started using that building year-round for programming. 
In 2007, the full-time parks employee position was eliminated and some seasonal em employee money was sent to the DPW for a mowing contract. So the parks department was now back to seasonal hours. In 2008 and 9, in that time, the budget was increasing as far as hours for the parks employees. So they, I was getting them to be able to work more hours spread out throughout the year. And then in 2010, Bob Fuller rose from a seasonal employee to a seasonal foreman with the retirement of Al Mason. At this time, we had three employees in the parks department, one working seasonally in the spring and fall, and the others working approximately 30 hours spring through fall, and Bob working a few hours in January through April, then working seasonally throughout the summer, which means 40 hours throughout the summer and fall. Um, and then in 2015, the Affordable Care Act was introduced and we had to make changes to our workforce. So we now have two parks employees that change from seasonal to part-time. So at this point, those two employees are working 28 hours a week for the majority of, this, of the year. Um, but with the growth of the town and the longer sports season, added programmings and more use of the fields and facilities, we're back to less hours and more duties to perform. So many of the jobs that need to get done in the Parks Department right now haven't gotten done this year. Um, this just is to show how much, this is how much square acreage of parks that we have. We have 21 square acreage of playing fields, parks, skateboard parks, all of that that we maintain. And then this <laughs> is a graph. <laughs> that shows, if you look at this left-hand side over here, that's actually number of participants. So you can see that March through, well, March through October is really the major time that we have people using the fields. We do have them using them in November and December. And this is a little bit older of a graph. I didn't put in, this is field usage pretty much. I didn't put in January, February, March, where we now are using the tuck building as well. And again, like I said, the Kids Kingdom, the Skateboard Park, the Inline Hockey Rink, those all kind of get used in the winter if we have good weather. So there's a need for someone to be down there to maintain that stuff. So this is the part where I said I'm not going <laughs> to read everything to you. I don't expect you to read it. But um, the parks, these are the parks duties that they have. They are cleaning their... They're mopping, they're washing things, they're doing trash, they're restoring paper goods in the tuck building, they're vacuuming, they're um, setting up for programs Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, they walk tuck field and Eaton Park and they pick up trash and then they go over to the basketball courts and tennis courts and they clean out those. They go to the different locations where we have um, recycling bin and trash barrels all around the town and pick those up and then they um, they pick up the debris at the historical society and founders park they go to Eaton Park do the same thing they inspect the playgrounds we have five playgrounds that need inspecting and um, then they that's what they do in the morning then in the afternoon they go and they clean the buildings the courts um, they're doing things for us for special events, such as setting up for the 5K road race or the Easter egg dig. They pre and then preparing the fields include loading the equipment into the bucket truck, dragging the infills, filling the batter's boxes, removing the rocks, screening the infill, lining the base paths, installing bases, or painting the fields for soccer or flag football, and then reloading the equipment and cleaning it before storing it again for the next day. They also still have to mow, and they weed whack around fencing and bleachers and they paint and repair the facilities and anything that happens to be, um, you know, vandalized, stuff like that. And so this, this slide just basically talks about off sports season. So January, February, and March, they are now doing things that 20 years ago didn't need to be done. So it's increasing over the years. Um, and this is why it's important for us to have help down at the parks. So it's a lot of the same things that I've talked about, but it's things that didn't have to be done a long time ago, like the tuck building. They have to clean that because we have programs in there every week. They have to keep the bathrooms stocked. They have to remove the trash still. And in the winter times, they have to shovel out the parking spaces and make sure that there's an escape route in the back of the building that's shoveled out. They have to do the same thing for the cave building, the historical society, and Eaton Park. Eaton Park, again, is the playground, is used 
all year round, so they have to inspect that and make sure there's nothing wrong with that all year round. Lou Brown Park, they have to do the trash. They have to check the inline rink that gets used all year and the skateboard park. And they check the gates and fencing throughout the months, make sure those haven't been damaged. The garages, they reorganize and they clean the equipment throughout the winter. They fix any equipment that has needs to be used in the spring. And then the various things that they do are, um, they fix things such as the lights for the snowflakes for the holiday season. They deliver and set up over 60 barrels around town and take them down in the winter months. They take down the flags, check the benches, and seal the benches. They take care of graffiti, set up the lifeguard chairs, and take them down and the signs. Um, and then again, they set up for our rec programs in the winter. And they pick up the trash, make purchases for the season, and remove and replace the nets for the basketball and the tennis courts. I'm sorry, I'm squirreling all around with this. This is just a shot I wanted to show you. This is an early morning at Tuck Field in the fall. This is just soccer. So picture this in around 11, 12 o'clock. You're also going to play football out there too. There's not a parking space to be had in the place. This is how it is. This is how the park looks August, September, October, November, April, May, and June. And it's only the sports that change every season. There's this many people out here. And then this is the parking lots. This is how the parking looks look on most Saturdays and every night in the summer. Parking lots look like that. They're full. And then the other warrant. Okay, let's wait. Let's wait and okay. let's uh, do this conversation. Okay. We're not going to uh, to decide anything about your warrant articles here this evening. Okay. We'll take it into. Um, we're going to have another evening where that's going to be discussed. Um, I would just like to say that. I certainly understand how you need someone there, but for me, I'm not going to be supporting this uh, because <coughs> I, especially until there's more concrete um, information about how we're going to have to deal with things like insurance in the future, and I, I, I know it makes it hard. Uh, I maybe see another part-time person there or whatever, but for me, I'm probably not going to be able to be going in favor of this. Mr. Waddell. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I go down there a lot when my grandkids are playing and stuff, so I see the parks and I see how much use they're getting and I see how, uh, how well kept they are, which is important. And I go to other towns, too, and I see their parks and their, you know, and how they're kept. And I, I think it's a really important position. And, and I, I would support it to go out to the voters and the voters will make their mind up whether they want it or not. Mr. Bridal, you told us a lot of the stuff they do do. What isn't getting done because of the time would be kind of what I would want to know. And I've been down there a lot. Mm -hmm. I see most of our parks. Um, I see the, the two guys you have working down there now, and they are there all the time. You know, it was just even like you said, mentioned benches. You know, you guys go out. How many, how many memorial benches do we have in this town that they have to go out and check? And, and you can't do that if you're if you're raking or, or mowing or picking up. There's all that other stuff. So it's not just our parks. We have our little pocket parks all throughout right. the town. And I know we have a lot of people that that uh, um, sponsor those that, that do the flowers and stuff. But there's more than just the flowers in right. some of these pocket parks. So. Um, well, basically, what is getting done now is the general stuff for getting ball fields ready for for play and trash pickup. The other things that aren't getting done are the things that you need two people for because a lot of times I, with only two of them we've lost like two and a half days of work now and they're overlapping some but they don't overlap all the time because we have to have people down there Monday through Sunday. We have to have someone down there every day of the week. So there's a lot of jobs that two people need to do that aren't getting done. For example we have a Kids Kingdom sign that needs to go up at the playground. We have a sign for the um, parking lot down at Church Street that needs to go up. That hasn't gone up yet. We have new playground equipment that we just got this year to replace on the Kids Kingdom playground that hasn't gotten done yet because they just haven't had the time. They'll have a little bit of time and fly the balls over and that's when they'll start to do some of these jobs when they're together because they're two man jobs. And like you said, uh, both employees are only 28 hours. Right. Um, and because the schedule 
is so spread out over the week, right. there are very few times that they are together. Right. And, and I agree with Jim. I think, uh, I think there is a need for it. I would like the voters to have that choice. Um, you know, Parks and Recs brings in a lot of money. You know, you just, it's not just the parking lots. Uh, you, with your other programming and stuff, a lot of that is self-funded. And it's a safety issue. And it's a safety issue, yeah. right. So I, I say we let the voters decide. Um, it is a tough one, but I think it's, it's needed. And, and to preserve and protect our equipment that we have down there, I think it's, uh, it's about time we went back to having a full-time manager. I would just like to say I was here in 2007 when uh, it was eliminated. I haven't really seen a, a big difference. Um, uh, but, you know, I'm, I question whether some of these things could be, if something needs to be done, why can't you bring someone in from the outside? Um, I, for one, am not going to be in favor of any new employees in any department. So it's not just your department. Um, so. You know, I think that there's a lot of stuff that, like in the past, one of some of the, like the, uh, Rusty just mentioned, the memorial benches. Well, in the past, we've had to give, stop doing that because there wasn't time. And we have in the past, and there may be other things that we have to stop doing. Mrs. Wolseley. I'm going to get you really frightened, but you're sitting down. I agree with you. <laughs> uh, all, all positions, not just this one. You do a remarkable job, and I understand you need this. I'm really concerned about our retirement and our medical costs, and this is right across the board. In the latest town and city, and I don't know if you guys are ready yet, they're talking about a cash balance plan. Other towns and other communities are trying to address this. The retirement and medical are going to kill us. That's, that's the problem with the employees. So I will not support not just this, but um, any other requests for full-time employees. If this is going on the warrant, and right now it's just Rick and I saying that, that we can't support it, the wording of this is a little problem, I think. Uh, Fred, it says, if this warrant article passes the amount of 22452 appropriated in the operating budget, uh, part-time position will not be spent. Some of that will be spent because this is geared as a 39-week appropriation. That's correct. So uh, we, I think we just have to correct that language instead yeah. of having the note. Right. But, uh, I, you know, you do a remarkable job. The, the, your employees do a remarkable job, and we're very grateful for it. But in this case, I can't support any new employees. One thing I was, I was going to ask is if you, I don't think we have this information about what, what you had on the your slideshow. Would you like a copy? Yeah, I think that yeah. you should give it to everybody so that we can really take a look at that. Because, sure. like I said, we won't be making a decision here this evening anyway, right. and it'd be good to have that. The other part that I wanted to say too is uh, mainly I'm not in favor of new employees because I would like to be able to be in favor of the employees we have, and I know I will be. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, love to get that information, if not uh, teach selectmen, but on the website so people have a real grasp of what you're doing. Sure. I would like a, uh, uh, a synopsis and a chop from the town manager and assistant town manager on how your uh, uh, maintenance needs, your uh, operating needs uh, can be uh, aided and embedded with uh, the public works department. I understand <laughs> that we plow uh, um, schools but we don't do anything else up there, but uh, parks are town property, and uh, the uh, um, segregation of uh, your, your outfit and public works to do essentially public work tasks, um, and having been a former public works employee with maybe Mr. Bridal back in the day. Um, you know, you're cutting the lawn here, you're cutting the lawn there, but it's all town property and uh, not school property. So I would like a chop on that to see um, how you two sit down and talk, and again, looking at uh, um, the Health Care Act, looking at unknown pension increases with that uh, uh, that uh, decrease in the stock market. And uh, additionally, we've got uh, another unknown, the uh, property casualty insurance. So there's a lot of unknowns when you, when you sit up here and we're looking at that. And, and thank you for bringing the idea forward. Well, I'm just trying to get the job done. Yeah, and I, I I've seen you. that it's, 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 it's not doing as well as it could. And yep. it, this what is about, the I need leadership down there. Yeah. What about the, um, didn't, uh -oh. 
so you're doing all most of the um, mowing now, not you, but your department or a Our lot department. of it. Yeah, we took or over. do you hire it? We both. Yeah, because in the past we used to hire it out. Right. Yeah, we, mowing the parks. We mowed all the parks for a long time. Then we, as you saw in the spreadsheet, we got a mowing contract, but they still don't mow everything. And so we still mow Tuckfield, um, Blue Brown, parts of Blue Brown Park, um, Eaton Park, and uh, Founders Park. But we still do all the weed whacking everywhere. So, and we, and we, in that contract is some of the things that Public Works used to do. The pump stations are in that contract for mowing. Do you ever get anyone that volunteers? No. <laughs> no. But, you know, that, that's a, that would be a serious uh, conversation to start because a lot of other towns do. And all of these parents of these children and, you know, maybe they might want to, uh, maybe there might be another answer with more volunteerism. And I certainly appreciate everything you do with both the young people and the uh, senior citizens. Thank you. You want to go on to the next one? Sure. Please? So this one is the Recreation Infrastructure Special Revenue Fund. And this one says, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 115350 for the purpose of purchasing the following items of equipment for the Recreation Parks Department. A one-ton dump truck for the Recreation Department um, to replace its current 1999 one-ton one dump truck, which shall be traded in as part of the purchase if deemed to be prudent by the Recreation Parks Director, Town Manager, and Board of Selectmen. Two, a new playground equipment to replace the obsolete playground equipment at Five Corners Park. All is determined by the Board of Selectmen, the Town Manager, and the Director of Recreation and Parks, and to authorize the withdrawal of 115350 for the Recreation Infrastructure Fund. So here, I just, <coughs> I should have put a pictures of the playground equipment that's at Five Corners right now. There's stuff that's been there since I started my job in 1993, and I'm sure it was there a lot longer than that. I'm sure you've been by it. You live by it, so oh, you've seen time. it. Every day. There's a terrible slide there. There's a big snail thing that's very outdated, and there's a spring animal. So truly, that, fa that park needs a facelift. Um, and a new, a new modern playground for the children there. So we'd like to put a playground that looks similar to this. This is all modern new equipment um, and a lot of fun for the kids. So we're looking to do something like that with part of the money. And then this is just a picture of our dump truck. There's a little rust over here on the left. And then this is our bed right here. It's a little rusted out. But this truck is a 1999. And as you can do by the previous slides, it's collected a lot of trash and hauled a lot of equipment for the Parks Department, and it's on the schedule. It's, it's the time to replace it, this piece of equipment. So then I'm not going to read all of this because we did talk about a lot of this already, but <laughs> basically um, I kind of said that the minimal amount of money that this warrant article represents, meaning the Parks Foreman one, will go a long way for the community whether you play a sports program or have a child that does, or if you sit and relax on the park bench and eat your lunch at one of the parks, the parks department affects you. They are unsung heroes that keep the play areas and equipment in parks and play areas safe for use and ready for use. They also keep our parks beautiful and help us to provide safe quality programs for the residents. And in that warrant article, I'm asking for a little over $43,000, which is 0 .016 on the tax rate. Then the second warrant article, will come out of the special um, recreation fund. Um, so the money to purchase those items will be coming from that fund and have no tax impact. Yeah, <coughs> this, um, you know, again, it will be good to have this information. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, we have, also we have the beautiful uh, park that's is quite well attended, the one down at the beach that the precinct pays for. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see if there's not some way that this could be come out of one of the funds that we have, this type of thing. Or b better yet, if there's some way to raise money corporately to uh, have someone put their name on that and do something nice. The one at I'd the like beach? To no, oh. the one here, oh, and maybe some of the others. I'd like to see a pr uh, private partnership type of thing, or maybe somebody trying to get some, um, you know, grants or something for something like this. Uh, there's a lot of things that we don't have in Hampton, and um, I wish we could have them all, but I think it's going to be tough this year. Right. Mr. Waddell? How much is in that fund now? 
gym. I don't know. <laughs> the top of my head. I don't know. But we, you know, we get 20% of whatever. 139,892. I can say 140,000. 140,000. So it is coming out of a fund. It's yes. coming out of a fund. Oh, yes. Fund yeah. is so four. It has no impact on the tax. Right. No. Correct. Okay. It's raised so, from parking fees. And that, that, oh, I'm sorry. Go, Go ahead. ahead. That, um, that park down there, some of that equipment on, I think, I'm sure Mr. Bean and myself played on when we were there, when we were at <laughs> that age. Uh, it's old. That I'm park has been you. there a long time, and it definitely does need to be uh, retrofitted. Uh, and again, this comes out of the the park revenue fund, mm -hmm. um, along with that that dump truck. That dump truck's 15 years old, yeah. uh, and it's it's served its life, and I'm sure it's mm -hmm. uh, it, it's time to uh, yeah. to go down the road with that. And but more more than that, playground equipment has changed an awful lot yeah. in the oh, yes. 40 years since that stuff was probably put in there. <laughs> Uh, and for safety-wise and stuff like that, I think that's a uh, a well-used pocket park. Yeah. And I think uh, for coming out of the fund, there will be no tax impact on it. I think it's a good way to yeah. to continue the, us to have these small little pocket parks around town uh, for for the children. So. Yeah, the dead trees. Are you need finished, to come Mr. Down. Waddell? I do too. <laughs> I still say I think that you should try to get some private partnership. I don't understand why a, a park like that wouldn't want to have uh, Coca-Cola or somebody yeah. like that that could come forth and uh, maybe help out. Well, you never know who will come out of the well, woodwork. Well, there could like be that. someone. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Wolseley. The dead trees need to come down too. <clears throat> yes, they do. That's not in her budget. I'm all over that too. I've got some um, quotes for that mm -hmm. as well. <laughs> I have no problem, Mr. With this. Bean. Uh, there is no tax impact. Uh, right. You do generate revenue. You work hard. Uh, we've talked about some other concerns. Uh, again, no tax impact. Recreation is important. I never see any kids on the Little River uh, um, playground. Mary Louise is always hogging the equipment, but <laughs> um, she's just a little girl at heart. Um, I, I do support it, and I think if you do. Uh, 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 improve that that playground there will be uh, some of Rusty's grandkids and some of my grandkids playing on it I'll be sure to bring them over thank you well playgrounds you. have a 14 year really lifespan and most of the High playgrounds school. in our community are all older than that now so it's time to start replacing this stuff good thank you Diana yeah. that's very nice thank you all right and I'll get you the, the copies information of the, yeah. yeah I think everybody would like to take a look at okay. it thank you for coming in tonight and thank you for waiting <laughs>